Hello guys and welcome to Stretch Street Podcast. This is the Energetic EJ and I'm super delighted to be here again with you this week. I hope your Friday is going well and I hope you're ready for the weekend. Okay. My guest today is Tokes Olunloyo. Everybody knows her as Coach Tokes. She is a food business mentor and coach and she helps people monetize their cooking from home. And I mean, I'm like, what kind of niche is this? <laughs> We're going to hear all about it. But most importantly, as you already know how we do it on Stretch Street, we're going to be diving into some of her stretch story at challenging times on her journey to being this person that she is today. And most importantly, the lessons that she has picked up from those stretch seasons. All right. So. You know how it is. Sit back, relax as we get to meet my guests. No matter how dark the night is, the sun always rises. No matter how hard life gets, keep moving forward. You never know what amazing things are waiting just around the corner. No story is too rough and no journey is too tough. Join us on Stretch Street to be inspired by the stories of people who have been through it all and come out stronger. Stretch Street Podcast. Stretching without snapping. Hello, Coach Talks. How are you doing today? I'm doing very, very well. Energetic, EJ. Love it, love it, love it. It's a pleasure. Honestly, an absolute pleasure to be here to be speaking to millions and thousands and billions of people all over the world. (laughs) Because that's where we're going. We're global. We're global. We're global. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And I tap tap it, you know, because sometimes we just speak and words, Mm -hmm. as you know, forms our world. And words are life. So thank you for speaking that positivity into this show. I receive it and I'm working towards it to to bring it into manifestation. Thank you so much. So, Coach Talks, let us meet you. First of all, four trivia questions before we get into the meat of the matter. Mm. What's your name and where are you from? We already know your name, but just tell us again so that you can pronounce it properly. And then (laughs) where are you from? (laughs) Okay, so my name is Omomi Olatokumbo Olunloyo. So those are my names. Trust me, I have lots of names. In fact, I have I have an acronym, <laughs> SO4. Uh-uh. Okay, I'm telling O-4. you. So that, that means all your Sandra. names are all, all, all. all my names exactly. So my Sandra is my baptismal name, um, and then I have Omomi Olatokumbo Omolara Olunloyo. <laughs> wow, SO4, so SO4. indeed. <laughs> So I have people call me SO4. Um, those who know me way back will call me SO4. Some will call me O3 um, because then without my baptismal name and without Omolara in there. But typically, a lot of people here in the UK where I'm currently based will call me Tox. If you call me or mommy, I know you know me way, way back. Way back, I know. Way back. <laughs> way back. But in the UK here, I'm often addressed as Tox. Tox. Awesome. Yes. Wait, are you related to the Olu lawyer we all know? Everyone says that. My husband says a big no. <laughs> not the Dr. Olu lawyer that we know, Kemi, not the, the one in the, in the uh, what's it called, government position. No, we're not. Apparently, Olu lawyer is a, is a massive family. So yeah. it's just one of the sub sub sub, but not directly related to any of them. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Anyways, awesome to know that. What do you do? So you see, that is a very interesting question because you know how when you go for networking event or you're meeting people and they're like, what you do? The typical response is, I am er, uh, and there you go. But interestingly, I don't do that because I am not er. Uh. <laughs> I am one of those crazy people. I, I've, I love to describe myself this way. I'm one of those crazy people. And I call myself crazy because I'm out of the box. I'm not your typical everyday woman. I am a busy working mom. I'm, I am a food business mentor. I am a model. I'm an international best-selling author. I am, 
<laughs> the list goes on, sis. And um, just that one person that seems to be able to do everything by the grace of God. I need to add that because I have found that everything that my hand finds to do, I do. And I don't do me mediocrity job. How do they say it? I don't do like, you know, Half let's just do a little bit there. I do a good job. I do a good job and I'm blessed like that. I have, we'll talk about my journey later, but I'm one of those people. I think there's a name for it because someone told me the other day I'm a multi-polite. Multi-potentialite. Yeah. See, I didn't yes. even bother to do it because I thought, you know what? Multi-influencer. Just... Okay. Thank you very much. That's it then. That's what someone said. So that's what you should actually call yourself because I, I see that in you. I have done so many things um, energetic. It's okay. unbelievable in terms of what I have done and what I have learned in terms of my craft. I'm into movie production as well. So I, I did do a major movie production that made it into limelight. Like, yes, in Nigeria, I had the premiere in Nigeria and also here in the UK as well. Hustle featuring the likes of Nancy Sime, Gabriel Folanyo, Bimbo Ademoye, and I could go on, Chip Femi Branch. Don't let me... So I, and I'm doing skits right now with um the likes of Lanria Ford. So um, when I say I'm doing... Yes, I know. I'm working. I have another um, movie already done already right now that I'm working on. We're in post-production right now and we're looking to do another one. So when I say I'm into everything, I'm not actually bragging. I'm actually... And did I say to you that I have a food business as well <laughs> that I run? I make cereals from home that I sell to farm shops as well and from my website called Purple Patch Cereals. So, and I have a nine to five job, but not your regular nine to five job. I am a, an, um, how do you call me now? A contractor. So I go into companies help them and I go. So right now I've just finished a contract. So I'm home right now resting and I'm hoping to start again in March. And I have a two year old. Can I add to the list as well? Amongst my other children, I have three children. My youngest is two. So that is the kind of person you're talking with. So how do you want me to describe myself? You say, who are you? <laughs> I'm writing five books at the moment as well. Can I add that to the list right now? <laughs> no. Bust my brain. No, bust my brain. No, bust my brain. What? So you know why I'm so excited? Because, because, because this is more like, okay, I am not alone. <laughs> she is here with me. Do you know that this has been a huge struggle? And I mean, mm. I've, I've been I've been working my way to it. Thank God for mm. coaches like DDK. DDK mm. was the first coach that I worked mm. with that yes. made me embrace the idea that I mm. don't have to be one thing. Yes. And you know, in mainstream, niche, yes. niche, niche is a That's thing correct. that we hear all the time. And sometimes Absolutely. it can be crippling. It can be stifling. And I also mm. understand the fact that um, we don't have to do everything at the same time. That's correct. But I really think that some of us are graced to do many <laughs> things at the same time. More like we have the octopus anointing. You can say that again. I never oh, heard that before, puts. but I do like that. More puts. The Deborah yeah. anointing. Deborah yes. was a wife. She was a mother. She was a prophet. She was a judge. Yes, judge. Absolutely. Absolutely. <gasps> like yeah. honestly, I am like you know. What do they say? Like, uh, um, my bed, my head is doing. Zhim, zhim. <laughs> <laughs> it's expanding and contracting. Yeah. So, so that is who I am. Yes, wow. I am grateful to God, and I do MC as well. I don't know if I added that to you because I wow. did an MC. Okay, so okay, so okay, okay. Now stuff. it's looking like this is becoming a brag. Please, please, please stop bragging. Please, 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 please stop oppressing me. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> To God be the glory. What can to I say? God indeed be the glory. Yes. And the and the, the the sweetest part for me is when you say, "I am good at at everything." Yes. You know that I'm good at it, right? Of course, I know we're going to get into that story of okay. Yes. It's not like you started doing everything at the same time. You probably yes. started one after the other, but now you can juggle all together. Right, yes. so we'll get yes. into that story. But before we go, the next trivia question is: What is your philosophy about life? Live well. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Eat well, live well, and enjoy every day. Hmm. Hmm. 
nice. all will I be well. It. I love the simplicity. Yeah, of very it. simple. Yes, eat well, if you eat well, well yes, because everything. I need this body to do a lot of things. Mm. <laughs> so it's important that I eat well, and living well is is um. It's different for everyone what that means to them. But True. ultimately for me, I need to live well, live well, enjoy everything I'm doing. And so that enjoying everyday bit there, I cannot do anything that does not put a smile on my face. That would, doesn't bring out the joy from the inside of me. There is no point, be it a nine to five, be it speaking, be it coaching. I'm, I don't want to take your money. No, thank you. Bye. See you later, Charlie. I need to enjoy every day. I believe that every day on the land of the living is a gift that has been presented to me by God. So why mm. would I, it would be a disservice to now go around frowning. No, I'm, I'm very intentional. So eat well, live well, enjoy every day. I love it. I love, I love, 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 love it. Finally, tell us one fun thing about you because your resume alone is fun. But tell us <laughs> one fun thing that most people don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know if most people don't know, but I'm called the king of boys. I have three boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, were you called this before this before the sequel came out? Before the, the movie came out, King of Boys? Um, I think it was after. Okay. It was after. It was after. It was after oh, it came yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. They call me Mama Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, when the King of Voice came out, yeah, so I was I'm often addressed as the King of Voice. Oh wow, wow, <laughs> well done, well done with Thank everything you. you've done so far, and in Thank fact, you. because you've done a lot and you're still doing a lot, mm -hmm. I am sure that there is a story to unpack here. So let us yeah. take it back. Mm. Now it's it's a bit. It's going to be a bit like, okay, where do we pick this story from? Is it from mm. the angle of a producer or from the angle mm. of a cook or from the angle mm. of a mom or from the angle mm. of a wife or all of those things? But mm. let's just say as a person. Yes. What are some of the hardest challenges that you've had on your journey to being this woman with so many hats <laughs> enough to start a boutique? Like all your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> if we um, put them on this place, they're not to start a boutique. Tell us what is your stretch story. <laughs> so thank you for asking energetic EJ. So my stretch story goes like this. I will summarize it and then I'll give you the full story. I did not love myself. I did not accept myself. I did not think I was beautiful. I did not think I have a voice. And I was in low self-esteem for the longest part of my life. That is a short story or the summary. Mm. So a lot of times you look at me now, it doesn't match. And I'm grateful to God that I don't look like what I have been through. Mm. I know people who have called me to verify that it's actually me <laughs> because they can't believe it's the same person. Wow. Um, you know, I always say to people when I go speaking and I'm empowering women, I'm like, I'm that one person that people came to my wedding to verify that I was actually getting married because no one thought I would ever get married. Like, can I say wow. I'm going on 18 years right now, this year Whoa. by the grace of God. <laughs> awesome. um, so that is the summary. Now hmm. to go way back so that we can go forward. Um, I was born in the UK and my parents moved back to Nigeria. Um, obviously, in those days, in the 70s, life was very good and moving between countries was very, very easy. easy. And so they decided to go back to Nigeria. So I grew up um, for my younger years, at least my formative years in Nigeria. I think by the time I finished secondary school, that is when I began to realize that I was different from everyone. But I did not understand what that means. So I was called names. I was very tall. As a 10-year-old, I, I started secondary school 10. As a 10-year-old in secondary, I was the tallest in my class, the longest in my class. So they call you, um, I'm trying to don't go yarrow longer. Mm. So I have all kinds of names. So I was called all kinds of things. I was teen. You can imagine I'm a young girl. I'm 10. Um, I'm the youngest in my class, but the tallest in my class. So from there, my voice began to shrink. I was a lively mm. person, as you can imagine. As a, most child are normally lively. You have the average mm. child who is quiet, but I was a lively child. I wouldn't say I was all together like this, as you're seeing now, because right now I think I'm totally the opposite of who I was growing <laughs> up. Yes. 
but I was a lively child, but all of a sudden I dis I, I began to withdraw Shrink. and mm. it was more of fitting into the crowd. Now that's the word I want to use. More of people pleasing because I just needed their acceptance and their love. I didn't understand why they didn't like me. I didn't understand why they were calling me names. And in that bid to get loved and accepted i did everything and anything i'm not even going to go and start describing the horrible things i have done in terms of people pleasing but i did everything you can imagine if you can think of anything that is not nice i, I was, i've been there i've worn the t-shirt i did everything through, throughout my secondary school that was all my experience um in terms of people pleasing so that's what i did literally um and then by the time i finished secondary school you know, there's a moment, there, there is a, a moment I want to share. I don't want to forget secondary school. I eventually left um, a day secondary school to a boarding secondary school uh, mm. because I I told my parents I wanted to experience boarding school and by the grace of God, they allowed me. So I did um, from SS2, for those who are in Nigeria, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like maybe year 11, 12 here in the UK and mm. uh, for other parts of the world. It was, anyway, towards the end of the secondary school year. Yeah. Um, I had to experience two years. And in that two years, it became very evident that I, I was not accepted. Mm. Um, and there I did a lot of things. And I can I can list examples now because I, some people might probably watch this and remember, I was known to be beating up boys. I literally was beating up boys. I know it doesn't it doesn't sound pretty, but that's, that was my major. So if it just any nonsense, it's just beating because I was very angry. I was very bitter. And mm. so that's it, because I didn't understand why you didn't like me, why you didn't want to get along with me. So I was just beating people up and down, beating people. Wow. I, I remember beating another classmate of mine, I rest her soul now because she's late. The moment I heard she was late, I said crying, that, oh my gosh, and I beat that girl. That's me repenting now. But <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah, so the other moment uh, moment I want to share again from secondary school in terms of my body in secondary school was there was an event that happened that if you're like me, I don't know if you went to a boarding school where people sneak out of the compound to go for events. Hmm. Because of how much I was not liked, I was not invited to this jumping out event. So everyone went but me. And why I want to share that is because someone died on that trip. Oh, wow. And I was the only one they said did not go for that event. And I think it's important to notice that. I'm saying this to say that sometimes being different is not actually weird. Yes. But at that point in time, I did not. And the person that died in the exam hall sits in front of me. His number, wow. when you're doing number, he sits literally in front of me, the guy that died. Um, so that is bad about secondary school. So I left secondary school. Um, I didn't get an altogether grade that I would like for so many reasons that I have just shared right now. And um, so I was wondering what I was going to do. So I went to do, um, um, I'm trying to remember why again. It's not why There was something else you had to do. I did another exam that is kind of like yes i say thank you says yeah so i did gc again <laughs> interestingly i got exactly the same result um <laughs> it mirrored this itself <laughs> in the same result so my gc wow. and my SSC mirrored themselves in the same way and so it was now a case of okay what course can i study with the result you have right now um mm. i had my maths my english wasn't very good can i say that again my english wasn't very good i can tell you i had a seven in English, you probably wow. don't believe me. That is what I had, and that's what I wanted to get. So that was really the result I was looking. For. I wanted to improve my English at least to a six mm. or to a five. My maths was four, home economics was three, physics was three, chemistry was six, biology was five. So every other thing was fine. It was the English I was looking for, and I didn't. I got a seven in my WIAC, and also in my GCSEs, Jeez. I got, I yes, I got a seven again for both of them, which was weird. Well, you know what? God does the weirdest thing. But to, to think that I'm writing books now, speaking, and people, and if, anyway, let me don't jump, but <laughs> that's what happened. So, mm. okay, what course can you do? I said, well, I love calculation, and I, I did well in math, I did well in physics. I said, okay, let me go for a course that is in that line. So, I decided to choose electrical electronics. Applied, I got applied, no cheating or anything with my result. It was okay to go for it. I entered into the school. The drama continued. That This is Federal Polytechnic offer. Mm. now i've got to the place right now i know people don't like me so it was just a case of just putting myself into any way and forcing my way through that was the strategy now so going there and go and dominate anybody i don't mm. talk just to them. that was my strategy of getting in there i don't of care whether coping. you like me or you don't like me of coping yeah i don't care whether you like me or not i have accepted the fact that i'm not pretty i'm ugly you don't like me i am tall and tall is not good for whatever reason it was in my era that was it 
So that was what I was doing. So I did everything to stand out, to to shine by force, whether you like it or mm. not. So of course, we clapped up in the of my hand. So I was a clap that day for the class <laughs> in electrical electronics. And towards the end of the first semester, there was a reshuffling whereby they said they needed to look at what you studied to verify that you're in the right class. And when they did that, they said I was in the wrong class because I didn't have economics. I didn't do economics. So I was chopped out of the class and given two options, food technology or computer technology. And mm. I thought then, I'm not doing computer technology. My dad, who works in one class at that time, we're talking 1996, 1996, yes, 1996, said, do food technology. You have options working in the food industry. So yeah. that's how my dad steered me into food tech. So it was never my first choice. It was never my second choice. It was never my third choice. It was circumstance that brought me to this place and it was that my dad helped me because of where he was working that i work in the food industry i work in wamco which is west african milk company they are called fresh lanka pina now um mm. he said you get good options and when you need industrial attachment we can see what we can we do can to help, you, help yeah. you in the food industry because i have connections i thought okay mm. good and so that's how i landed in the food industry just to build my story up so still in this stage i'm still a very fragile person um and doing the best i can so I'm going to go forward, fast forward now. And I yeah. left um, um, the ND. There was riot for those who remember Kwara State. This was when June 12 election was and the shooting mm. and everything. So I had to leave school, finish the ND and don't go back again. And I did my HND in Yaba Tech. Okay. The interesting thing about Yaba Tech was I continued being violent and very angry. <laughs> it it is you stop. now. It, it was you. You carried it I everywhere. Not, I did not change my color. Um, and I dressed anyhow. I just wore mm. clothes. I, it wasn't really about looking good or feeling good because I was like, what's the point? I'm not impressing anybody. I'm just going out. But the interesting thing at that point in time is that I eventually found someone in church who said he liked me. Wow. And that put a smile on my face. And it began to soften me a little bit. But a little bit did not mean I did not fight or shout or do all those other things that I was not supposed to do as a woman or even mm. as a child of God that I profess I was. Mm. So I I try to be in between and serve God with all of my heart diligently and have a focus for my life. But because I did not know who I was and I was still very angry that people did not accept me for who I was, it showed, it manifested from time to time. And that's mm. the way I would say it. Now, follow me now. I have low self-esteem. I don't think I'm good enough. I have a boyfriend in my mind, I'm thinking this is marriage. Since I found somebody that's holding tightly, guarding jealously, nothing is going to happen. I come heaven. Don't let him go. Don't let him go. This is, this is, and I also need to know that my, as at that time, for some reason, everyone did not agree with that relationship. But I was like, you guys don't even know where I'm coming from. Don't even let's go there. This is heaven. I'm staying here. So I continued mm. on. And then one day he woke up. I'm going where, going somewhere with the story. And he woke up one morning and said he's no longer interested. This is after two and a half years. Just woke up. It's not like there was a fight or argument. Nothing. Mm. I saw you yesterday, this morning. He said, no, I don't want to see you again. And that was when reality hit oh, me. Wow. And I, and I went back to rock bottom again. But can I say in that mess is where I found my husband that I have wow. been in the same school with. Because that very day, I remember what he said to me. He said, I know you. Because of the kind of person I am. But but there's something is wrong. He said, this is not you. Something is wrong. What happened? And then I narrated the story. And in his own words, which I say every time and I giggle every time I remember what he said. Because I can remember I'm that kind of photographic memory person. That's why I always say, don't offend me because I will remember. remember. <laughs> you are not in the class well. of forgive and forget. <laughs> yes, so I remember. Oh my gosh. But anyway. He said to me, he said, where is that guy? Let me go and break his head. My husband is a typical mushy man. I know he doesn't look like it, but he's mushy inside and out. He's a posh mushy guy. <laughs> he said, let me go and break his head. And then I laughed. I said, that's better. And then for the very first time, I thought someone genuinely cared about how I felt. Oh, that someone was hmm. going to defend my corner. He actually saw you. Hmm. He saw me. He said, you know, it's not a case of, hey, Yakpele. No, no. He said, let me go and break his. That's what his word. Let me go and break his head. And I looked up and I laughed. And I still laughed today every time I remember it. So that was when the journey came for me to now want to change my life because of him. Because mm. someone, I felt someone saw me. Not for the angry, bitter person, but he wanted to fight my corner. He wanted to make sure I was okay. I did not feel before that time that anyone genuinely was like that for me. 
apart from wow. my parents or my sister. He was the first person that actually, for me, I see, when they say I see you, I believe at that point in time that he saw me. Mm-hmm. And that is where my life changed. Don't get me wrong, there were lots of battle along the way because people were like, you're not marrying her. The two of you are from where? You are from Mushin, she's from Suru Lere. Where did the two of you meet? Where did you jam? It's not possible. You are just using her. She's using you. And all kinds of things. People were investigating me, watching my moves. Eh? And I forgot to include Adam in the conversation that at that point in time in my life, I was following boys all around. And when I say follow boys around, it wasn't about sleeping around with them. It was well, like it was I tom was boy. You were like a tomboy. Yeah, so I was hanging out with boys. So you'll find me with the boys, rather with the girls. With the girls That's what yeah. everyone was concerned. I was sleeping with everybody in the whole world. And mm. did I care? Oh, yo, yo, no. See, even my, I think at some point in time, my dad actually felt that. And so he thought I was living with everybody and anybody. Because every time he comes, he's always... Ah. The person I saw yesterday, I said, what it's my friend. Ah. Hey, <laughs> everybody is your friend. It's only you. <laughs> my friends, though. I was hanging out with electrical electronic guys. Oh my mm. gosh. I, yeah, but tech, I'm sure if they catch this, they will know that I'm not making up stuff. I was always in the boys' hostel. Always in the boys' hostel. So this is what happened to my life. So when mm. I met my husband, then student in the same class, there were so many things about him that clicked. And I'm saying this to say this for those who don't believe that there is power in the words that you speak. There were mm. some things I have said in my formative years, that if I was going to marry, if anyone decides that they are going to, that's why when I saw this first person that said he didn't fit it, but because he said, I like to, you know, I just agreed that we just continue the journey. But mm. I know what I said. What I said was I wanted to marry someone who was my age mate. And what that, that came from the fact that my parents are age mates. And I liked their synergy. I liked what they, they built together. And I thought I liked that. I said, it would be nice to marry someone that is my age mate. Eventually, when my husband asked me out and I got to know him more, we had the same month, same oh, wow. year. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So, that is so. Be careful what you say, please, guys. There is power in the words you no use. Word. I said this as a 16-year-old, I remember, because I was like, if ever, ever marry, I would like to marry someone who is my age mate. I did not put a letter or def- define it, but this is too tight. This is too tight, too close. And then my parents accepted it. And that's what made me know that this is your home now. Mm. So the one you were in before was, <laughs> was a facade, was just you people pleasing. This is, this is where you're going. Now, remember we, I said that I was suffering from low self-esteem. Yeah. He did his best to help me. And that's the word I will use, you know, even to pass my exams, to read and study. He invested in me. He did. Hand on mm. heart. He did. So say, let's go and read. I'm like, I'm not reading. I will not cook pass. So what's the point? Let's go. He was like, no, we are going to read. We are going to read. So let's go. He will book time yeah. there and he will stay there with me. My husband is the kind of person um, that he's not a, a scholar in terms of we spend 10 hours reading. I spend 10 hours reading. I know everyone learns differently, but I'm that person that will read, read till this exam or drop your paper. That's when I'll drop. He's not that. He, 15 minutes is done and he can pour down what he has read. So he mm. didn't have to be in the room there with me, but he stood there because of me, because, because he wanted to make you. sure that I was getting what I was reading because I struggled. Mm. So my self-esteem was beginning to grow gradually. And I thought, finally, perhaps this was my thought. Once I marry this, the love of my life, who cares about me? That's it. All my problems will be gone and I can enjoy the rest of my life. In fact, I said, and they lived happily ever after. That's what ever I always after. said. And they mm-hmm. lived happily ever after. So that's the end of my struggles. But I was wrong. I relocated um, from Nigeria to the UK. And I remember when I was going, my dad was saying, do you want to marry? I said, no, I'm not marrying. He said, do you want to do interest? I said, no, I'm not doing it. He said, ah, but you're going to... I said, no, I'm not. I said, let me go to where I'm going to. Let's decide. Because I was just determined that I didn't want to make a mistake in marriage. I have mm. seen and heard so many dramas about marriage. And I was very intentional about the quality of life I wanted to live, even though I knew who I was. But I didn't want anybody that would do me anyhow or treat me hard. I didn't want to feel but I didn't want to... A case of less divorce. So I wanted to give us time apart for both of us to decide that yes indeed this is where we wanted to go so eventually when we we agreed you know he proposed and i accepted to my parents and he told everyone they were like it's not possible so a lot of people came to my wedding to actually (laughs) verify (laughs) we're getting married because it's not possible he was using her she was using him and it's not possible but yes 18 years counting and we give god praise Hmm. so i'm saying this to say this the people around you may not necessarily understand you. Um, they may not actually see the potential in you. 
Um, in fact, they may have labeled you and put a, a cap in terms of where you are. Mm. If you continue to believe that lies, and that's the way I will say it, because it's a lie. It's a lie. If you continue to believe that lie, you will continue to go down. Hmm. There needs to be a light bulb moment for you at some point in your life. And it's different for everyone. I had my light bulb moment. My light bulb moment <clears throat> was when I went for a conference. And I came back from that conference. It was titled The Supernatural Woman. And that's when they, I realized that I don't have to be all these things that I have been trying to be. And that's the word, trying to be. Um, it's actually okay to be me, whether ugly or not. <laughs> accept my nose the way it was. Accept mm. my ears the way it was. Accept my fault and my beauty. Everything. That is the total package. Yeah. And that, that is why I need God. Because when I rely on God, every other thing will be in the walk in the park. Mm. It was that event. When I traveled, I went to Chicago. I went for that event. It was that conference that made me come back home and told my pastor because I was serving everywhere because I wanted to walk because I needed to fit in and and because I could do stuff. I could yeah. do stuff. I just found out that I have a knack for learning things and doing. So it was always talk, come and do this. Mommy, come and do this. Talk. And I would go because I can do it. And I, and I ended up um, hurting myself severally, collapsing, falling down severally. And I would go to the hospital and they would say, oh, there's nothing. You're just stressed. Go and relax. Put your feet up. And that's the consistent story I was getting for years after I got married. Go and mm. rest because I was attending all the seminars in the whole world, attending all the training in the whole world, Just spending money that I wanted to have. feel more like a better, I like said, there's something proved. because you wanted your proved. profit. Oh, wow. Hmm. So I spent money I didn't have, credit cards, and my husband will, you know, bless him, <laughs> shout, scream, <laughs> how are you going to pay this? You're going to go and pay another 2,000 pounds for training. You've gone to another training. What are you looking for? What are hmm. you looking for? I just wanted to be loved. I wanted to be. But did you? But do you? Do you regret going for all of those trainings now, or do you think they Ooh. played a huge role in ah. forming the woman that you are now, the person who has now ab absolutely or totally accepted herself for who she is, the good, the bad, the ugly? I just love me. That's it. That's it. Because all those things now, right now, is a no-brainer for me to do some things now because of the money I've invested in myself. Then, even though I had the wrong motives but they've all come very useful because now I go back to my archive and I'm like, oh, when they say, oh, I want to do this. I think I have a training on that. There's no training you want, right? I have no but I'm like, I think I have a training on that. I think I have a course on that. I'm telling you, I was just a course warmonger. Course junkie. Was, as in, oh, Jesus. If Jesus could come down, he would slap me front, back and left and say, what is your problem? No, I spent money I didn't have. So I, I did that. It's definitely without it. I, would, I wouldn't change anything if I'm being honest because... I don't think I'll be the person I am right now. This very, I'm the way I love myself now. Eh? Oh, Jesus. Is it's non negotiable. I can't ah, see it. Like, ah. you can't tell me otherwise. You cannot. Ah. <laughs> Before you tell me I'm pretty, I'm telling you that this girl is fine. As in, come on, look, go moto fine. As in, I am giving myself. Create. Oh, Jesus is love. <laughs> I'm but so you know in love what, with um, myself. As you, as you share your story, every, the thing that is coming to my head is all things work together. All things mm -hmm. work together. Yes. All things work together. And, yes. uh, and especially because you could have done other things. So you could have spent all of this money or other things mm -hmm. that would destroy you. Mm. But rather, you spent the yes. money on things that actually mold you into shape. Yes. That can only be God. Because That's really... It. Again, you were doing all of these things for the wrong motive. Yes. But God was using it to mold you up into the person that you are today. And it's just, it's, it's like, wow, wow, yes. wow, 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 wow. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. If so you were going to highlight some lessons, I know you've mentioned mm -hmm. here uh, in the ways that I love how you do it. I say this <laughs> to say this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> It shows you've gone to a lot of trainings. Yes, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were going to highlight, just say for people who are like, okay, what are some lessons? You know, some people like to yeah. itemize things, right? Yeah. But I can yeah. already pick them as you were saying them. But if you were going yes. to itemize them, give us top three lessons that yes. your journey has mm -hmm. taught you and that you can share with our world to say, guys, these are the lessons I've learned. I don't know. Do with it what you want. 
Okay, so my number one lesson is that I am enough. I am enough. Um, my nose, my eyes, my ears, my height, they're perfect. In fact, that is what I need for my destiny, for my life, for everything that I need to accomplish in life. Absolutely. I am enough. Mm. I am mm. enough. Mm. And mm. and I struggle with that a lot. I, I, I honestly... I could not understand. I just felt that I needed to add more. There's, you know, I need to fill in the gaps. I did not mm. want to accept weakness. But actually, it's part of the package. True. That is what makes me human. Being human. Mm. That I can make a mistake and say, actually, I messed up. That mm. is what makes me human. So I am enough. That is number one. And then number two is that I am lovable. <laughs> I, love I am lovable. Yes, I am lovable. I deserve to be loved. I am lovable. I'm a person that is full of love inside and out. In fact, because I accepted the love of God, he allowed me to love people. I believe right now that there's nothing anybody can do now that can move me anymore because I have been there, done that. I've been upset to the point that I felt that the inside of me was going to turn and turn and I was going to die. And yeah, so nothing anyone does for me right now, do me right, or around me right now. In fact, I'm like, I am apologizing on their behalf. And people are looking like, but you are not the one that I said, I know, please forgive them. They did not know. It was a mistake. It was not intentional. I'm sure they could have, you know, I'm fighting everybody's corner and I'm, I'm pleading their cause and doing all of that now um, because no one did that to me. And I know how it feels like to be in that place that it feels like nobody sees you. I'm there. I'm in the crowd, but no one sees me. But can I say now, there's no way I go now. Ha, you cannot you see me, Ke. I know now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm from my entrance, in fact, my la- let, let me let me crack a joke now. My last contract that I just finished right now, when I was leaving the building, do you know what I did? After I greeted everyone, I, I just said, Tox is leaving the building! And they'll shout, I'm leaving the <laughs> Tox is queen. As in, I, that's how I walked out of the building. In fact, they came to me, I was like, oh, you didn't hug me. Oh, sorry, I missed you. I w- I'm just so full of life right now. I'm so full of So that's number, w- number two, I'm lovable. And then number three is that I am here to make a difference there is purpose Mm. in my life and i need to make sure that i give of everything that is inside of me regardless of what anyone thinks or feels because this is my explanation when god was giving me the assignment i didn't have you on my left or my right if i didn't have you on my front or my back it was me and god having that conversation so if i decide i'm going to do ten thousand things i'm doing it and i really don't care what you think Preach, sister. Preach. I really don't care what you think. If you say Tox, you are doing a great job. Hallelujah. If you say Tox, you are doing a rubbish job. Hallelujah. Moving on. Next. Next. That's it. So, so that's it. That that would be my. (laughs) That would be my top three. That would be my top three. You know, guys, guys. Let me tell the truth. This session was for me. I don't know if it will bless you, but. I care about you, but today, mm. allow me to be selfish. This session mm. was for me. So mm. thank you so much, Coach Talks. I know we didn't even dive, we just crashed the surface with your story. No, we didn't. But I am glad I did not come from a point of, oh, what you do, tell us the story around. I love the fact that I said, just as a human, and I love, love, love the journey you took us on. Because... I want to believe that this episode is going to liberate somebody out there. And like you said, you are here to make a difference. And I know I'm here as well to make a difference. But again, I think you are ahead of me in the game. And some things you said here today are liberating for me. I kid you not. And I now I see why it took so long for this to happen. (laughs) Yeah. Do you know how long we've been going back and forth? <laughs> I was just like, yesterday, let's do it. Let's do it, 11 o'clock, and that's it, done. Right, now I understand. And I think, I think that you carry a grace of oh, thank you. all things working together. Like you are, you are, you are, you are a... You are a manifestation of that scripture that says all yes. things work together because your yes. story, I like, I can't even begin to fathom it because mm. somebody else, like other people, you know, some it, it would have, yes, they would have probably hurt themselves deeper. Yes. Right. 
I mean, yes. like you said, you were always with boys. It could have gone wrong. Oh, trust me. It could have gone <laughs> south. Yes. Very, but very then... south. Sis. Very, very south. Sis. In fact, what you said now reminds me of when I went to Portaco. I bet my parents will be watching this. I'm thinking, did you get to Portaco? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I followed the boys, student junior. <laughs> I followed the boys, went to do Aluta Continue, Victoria Asata. And they were shooting. I said, see, think of this. what you don't want to know all the things. Like I said, I probably need to write my life story down and, and write that every because a I have, memoir. Yeah. A memoir. Should. Yeah. I yeah. have been through. Yes. And they were shooting. That's when I yeah. This was from off Did our, you carry a gun? No, I didn't. I was following the um uh what's it called? Student Union people, following them all around and fighting for the rights of the students in Port wow. Harcourt. Then we went for a union on the bus. Wow. From Kwara really State, and I'm supposed to be in school. You are, yeah. you are really here for a purpose. That's why. No, no. <laughs> but I oh, love, yes. I love the journey that brought you here, and I, I, I know you're a coach now, so you can you can speak a little bit to this as we round off the session, to yes. the power um, mm. of the mindset, right? Yes, because yes. a lot. I don't know that this data is correct, but because of how even I personally have had yeah. to war and work and I'm still working on some limiting mindset and programming mm. that yes. I grew up with, right? Yes. I know that a lot of the challenges, a lot of the problems that we have, especially from mm. back home, Nigeria, yes. are mindset related. Yes. And the scariest part or the, the, you know, yeah, is the fact that a lot of people are not even aware. Mm. So they're busy dealing with something else mm. when the root cause is something totally different. Absolutely. So just say a word to that in the journey that you took to really re-engineering your mind. Because again, for you, you were, you were in the UK, and even yes. though probably because you didn't have your formative years there, so it didn't help to maybe solidify some like, you know, self-awareness and just, you know, acceptance of self and then, you know, yes. going back home and just all those rejection and a lot of people are dealing with rejection. And like you yes. said, for you, you t the way you could deal with it was to become mm -hmm. a Jaguda. Like, mm -hmm. I will break butter. I will, I will, mm -hmm. would, you, you must know me. Is something, you know, you had That's to just right. use that. But yes. for some people, it could be something else. It could be going yes. into drugs, yes. you know, maybe sleeping around just to feel yes. accepted, yes. you know, all sorts of things. Yes. What would you say to that journey of re-engineering your mind? And if somebody is listening to this and something is pricking in them and saying, man, mm. I think this, the way I'm living right now is a response mm. to the way that I feel people are treating me. How can they start their journey to recovery? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That's a beautiful question. And the first thing I would say, in fact, that inspired me writing my first book, Two Steps to Receiving from God, um, mm. because it's a, it's a book of confession. It's a confession book for your life, for your family, for career, you know, marriage and all of that. But the first thing you have to do is, number one, you have to forgive yourself. Mm. Um, and that is what I did. First of all, I forgive myself for all the things I have done. Um, I forgive myself for being very stupid. I forgive myself for being silly. All the things I called myself, I forgive myself for everything that I have said, everything that I have done. I forgive myself. And when I did that, then I forgave every person who I knew intentionally. Some people are, you know, they didn't do it in time, but those who I knew, they deliberately wanted to harm me. Like you coming to my wedding to see that I was getting married. That for me was not a nice thing. So I forgive mm. a lot of people, including some of my family members, both extended and large, for the things they have said to me that they did not know that had an impact. Mm. So that, that for me, I'll be like, after all, they said it, so let's leave it. And that's what I did, literally. Mm. So if you told me I was crazy, oh, you're going to see another level of crazy on top of the crazy that I was already crazy. If I said I was this, I would manifest that to you, literally. So I, I did a lot of forgiving outside and inside. When I did that, then I went back to God. Mm. I went back to God. I love God. I, I He loves me. And so I love him back. <laughs> That's the way I would say it, Because he first loved me. But ultimately, mm. I I started to accept the love of God. I, I was that person that would then look for all the scriptures of who I was in the Bible. I am. 
I am blessed. And that's why I love the ABCs and that's where I got it from. So I'm that person that now I'm very bold in terms of speaking confession and affirmation that I'll say I'm amazing, I'm bold, I'm courageous, I'm delightful, I'm elegant, I'm fearfully, I'm wonderfully, I'm gorgeous, I'm hot. Because I learned it and I kept saying it over and over and over and over again. I'll look in the mirror and I kept saying it to myself. Regardless of what people said to me, regardless of how I felt, I kept on saying it. So it doesn't matter what I was feeling. I knew my feeling was underrated. I could be happy today and sad tomorrow. So I did not let my feelings. And I think you need to know that in case you are one. Feelings, you are in control of your feeling because they will go up and down. Mm. Something can trigger you and be excited. And something can happen and you'll be sad. So feeling is, is not on the table. It's not for debate. I chose. I made a decision. Folks, this is who God says you are. And this is what you are going to live. And so I believe the word of God. I accepted the love of God. And then the next thing I did after that, in all of these faces, I didn't tell anyone. It was a journey. It was a personal discovery journey for myself. So I didn't make any announcement like, oh, I'm, I'm going to change my life. What? No, I didn't do that. It was just, that's what I did. Some people have to be accountable and speak to people. I didn't need that. I'm a strong person in myself. All the things I've mm. done, I'm sure you can tell that I am. So I'm a determined person. I just like, you've, you've, done, you've got to the end of yourself, too. So now let's turn around and do things the way it's supposed to be and live life oh. of meaning and life of impact. And I so wanted no one to leave or go through the journey that I have been to. I was very intentional. Nobody should have to go through what I've gone through. I'm sure there are a lot of more horrible story, horror story, but I felt what I had gone through myself was bad enough in itself. And no girl, no woman, no human being should have to go through that to feel like I have to do this so that you can accept me and like me. I have to wear this lipstick. Mm. I have to dress the short skirt i have to not wear no I, I just felt no no one should have to do that so after i did all of that then the next thing i did was um listening i listened to a lot of motivational messages a lot of motivational videos podcasts anything that was that would lift up my spirit and tell me i can i was listening mm. to yes i can Empowering anything wherever you. you are yes it did, i was not choosy i would just go youtube and look for something that would say i can or possibility and all of that and so i would just listen to all kinds i was not selective because i didn't know anyone so i was just going there to find inspiration and that's where i found terry savel Foy. and my life has not changed my oh how would i say my life has not remained the same since i same. met her i can call her friend she's not a stranger to me because of that journey, she was a major, major influence in my life because her own story as well is one of transformation, how her life changed, you understand, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and she's doing all these things she's doing. And so that's what I would say. So I started speaking the word. I started listening to messages. And I, the more I did that, the more I believed my faith grew. I believed in myself more. And I started saying, okay, now, Tox, what do you want to do? Then I would just get an idea. And I'm one of those people that I get ideas. It's I have a book I call The Book of Possibilities. I let you written a lot of things. That, my husband will look at me, ah, do you want to do that again? I'll be like, oh, do you want to, in fact, <laughs> let's don't go there. Every time I keep that, I want to, I'll be like, only you, leave it. Ah, you've not finished that one you are doing. Hey, but this one too came. So I just write down now. <laughs> So I just have my book and I just write down. I'm telling you, this week, if you know how many businesses I have spoken to people, three, I've done three businesses this week. God, God is my witness. I will not lie to you. I literally called this person. I said, my body is biting me. I cannot sleep. Please, I want to do this business. Please help me go on. Let's see, how can we do it? <laughs> so I'm saying this to say this, that once you find your place, you find your position and you find your purpose, your life would be so meaningful. And that is one of my programs, find your place, position, and purpose. And that was God teaching me about me, knowing that I have a place, knowing that I have a position, and that there is purpose for me to address. So find your place, position, and purpose. And, and my signature program, I love that program because it would definitely take you from wherever you are right now to where you are meant to be if you're struggling. So that's that's the summary, sis. So I began to follow people, mentor. I got a mentor. I got a coach. Till now, I still have mentors and coaches that are following me because I need to be accountable. And every time I feel like I'm the local champion where I am, I jump ship. Because I'm like, I've not reached anywhere. How would I mind? I jump ship. So I keep jumping ship. So if I feel that everyone is always like, talks, talks, and it's time to leave. They should not call my name again. I've done. Let's move to the next boat. So I keep jumping ship, keep jumping ship. And I'm open to volunteering. I serve. Yes. And I keep serving. So anytime I see someone that I admire and I love, the latest person I did was Lola tomorrow. I've been following her for a oh, long time. Amazing. And I, heard you when I long saw long. that, I, I was ran. like, what? I ran. I like, I'm like, what? I'm going there. <laughs> Yeah. So I keep serving. I keep serving. So anytime I see people that I that are women of God doing well in their space, that are people that I've been looking up to. Because I have people, you know how you have people that you follow yeah. and you like what they're doing. I'm like, anytime they're in town, I'm going to gum. And that's why I am gum body. And I know how to gum body. 
<laughs> seriously so that's so that's my story sis that is my story and in the words of les brown and i'm sticking to it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah, absolutely so. and it's just it's inspiring and um it's it's just aligns sweetly into what i represent which is just to share these inspiring stories to see that see there is no there is no oh this is how i am especially if you're on the wrong side of of the divide there you yes. can always turn back you can always yes. transform yourself you can yes. always reinvent yourself and yes. you can be anything um that you are already created to be if you would just accept it because i know all of these things that you do now you already had the capacity to do them, but it just so happened that life took you on this journey that you had to take. Wow. Thank you so much, Coach Tokes, for this amazing, amazing share, for letting us into your life so brilliantly. God bless you. Guys, I hope that you've been blessed by this session because I have been, like I said earlier on, I don't know if I'm selfish about this, but permit me to be selfish that this particular episode was for me. It was liberating for me. There are a lot of things that I could relate with in her story. And I hope that this has been that for somebody listening to this, that you can relate. Somebody listening or somebody watching that you can relate with this story and that you have picked something that you are going to run with to transform your life, to change your story and to be the person that God has already created you to be. This is the Energetic EJ. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel or to my audio platform to listen to the audio on your favorite uh, podcast channel. All right. Like come your way again next week. Of course, I'm going to leave all the links to um, Coach Talks handles so that you're able to connect with her. You're able to connect with her. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do that again. Support the work that I do here by donating on patreon or becoming a patreon or buy me a cup of coffee i know you can do that it's just five dollars i know you can do that all right thank you so much god bless you see you next week Bye bye